Welcome to the Arlington Street Church podcast. Founded in 1729, Arlington Street continues today as a gathering place for progressive people of faith in the greater Boston area and beyond. We are located at the corner of Arlington and Boylston Streets, across from the Public Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace. Good morning. Welcome to Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace. Welcome to the soul of Sunday. We are Unitarian Universalists. Ours is an historic faith with a progressive theology. We affirm the worth and dignity of every being and that we are all deeply interconnected. We are bound to one another, not by creed, but by covenant. And we are called to answer the call of love with open minds, open hearts, and open hands. Whoever you are, those of all nations, all creeds, all colors, all kinds of love, you are welcome here. Dearly beloved, I miss you. I love you. I'm so happy we can be here Zooming to worship together while we're apart, doing our part to flatten the curve of COVID-19 transmission and infection. Thanks again and again to our extraordinary tech team, Art Nava, Khala Hazar, Kem Moorhead, Richard Brew, and Sandy Dixon, and a special Happy Eastern Orthodox Easter to Chala and to all those who are celebrating this week. We always bless the runners on the morning before the Boston Marathon. That would have been today. Know that we are not canceling the blessing of the runners. It's just postponed until Sunday, September 13th. And what a joyful day that will be. I want to say something about this beloved spiritual community in these difficult days. Just when the need to stay physically apart might have blown us apart, we have moved in and held each other close, emotionally and spiritually. And just when we might have been tempted to close ranks and huddle virtually among those we have known and loved for so long. We have thrown open our virtual doors, welcoming people from all over the world. We have never been closer and we have never been stronger. A joyful welcome home to those of you who have moved away but are now here among us again. Know how much we have missed you and how grateful we are that you have come home. You have brought us to light and full hearts. To those of you who think of yourselves as visitors, as guests, know that you are now a part of us, this beloved spiritual community. We're so glad you have come. So grateful to share these difficult days with you. Welcome home. Here is our beloved Reverend Beth. Good morning, my friends. It is wonderful to be with you. If you haven't already downloaded today's order of service, there's a link in the chat, and it's also available on our homepage at ASCBoston.org. All of the hymn lyrics are included in the order of service and will be posted in the chat so we can sing together. 
There's also a link to Sermon Bingo. Feel free to play along while Reverend Kim preaches. To help us remember that despite the screens, we are at worship and not at work, I suggest making your Zoom window full screen and finding a spot to rest your hands that is not the keyboard. If you have a candle and matches nearby, we can light the chalice together in a moment. If you need tech support during the service, our amazing tech team is standing by to help. You can reach out through the chat here on Zoom, post on Arlington Street's Facebook page, or email outreach at ASCBoston.org. As we continue our virtual greetings, please say hello in the chat. Let's engage that Arlington Street spirit of welcome that transcends social distance as we greet one another heart to heart. We like to hear the sound of the flight of my own boat to slide. First and give way beneath her, and sing, and sing, and sing, so in she hath wings. We like to hear it out, posing a flight of my own boat to slide. First and give way beneath her, and sing, and sing, and sing, knowing she hath the wings. And sing, and sings, and sings, knowing she hath the wings. As Kim lights our chalice, symbol of our free faith, and you light your candles at home, we hold in our hearts the world of people who are being affected by this virulent pandemic, those who are anxious and afraid, those who are sick, those who have lost loved ones, and all of our essential workers, especially those working in healthcare. Across the centuries, we are assured by words attributed to Julian of Norwich, all will be well, and all will be well, and all manner of things will be well. This chalice lighting is in honor of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. It was written by Unitarian Universalist minister, Max Kapp. It's called Gratitude. Often I have felt that I must praise my world for what my eyes and ears have seen these many years and what my heart has loved. And often I have tried to start my lines, dear earth, I say, and then I pause to look once more. Soon I am bemused and far away in wonder. So I never get beyond dear earth. Let's sing together now a song of praise for the earth. Our director of music, Mark David, is going to lead us in Blue Boat Home. Good morning, everyone. Good to see all of your faces. I'm here in my living room in Arlington, Massachusetts, and uh, I'm excited to share with you uh, one of our most beloved hymns, Blue Boat Home the classic Hifridal tune with lyrics and the arrangement by Peter Mayer. I hope you'll sing along with me.
my dry land heart can say I've been sailing all my life now Never harbor or port have I known The wide universe is the ocean I travel And the earth is my I fly the starry sea, leaning over the edge in wonder, casting questions into the deep, drifting here with my ship's companions, all we kindred pilgrim souls making our way by the light of the heavens in our beautiful Hail the great winds urging me on. Breathe the infinite sea before me. Sing the sky my sailor's song. I was born upon the fathoms. Never harbor or port have I known. And now, live from Osaka, Japan, Hana and Kazuhiro Mori will lead us in sanctuary. Open my heart to be a sanctuary. All men holy, loved and true, with thanksgiving. It is now time for our treasured ritual of sharing community candles of sorrow and joy. These candles were submitted at ASCBoston.org. If you didn't submit your candle and have one to share this morning, I invite you to type it into the chat. In addition to sharing our sorrows and joys this morning, let's reach out to one another in the week ahead, staying connected. May these times remind us of how very precious this beloved community is. We need one another. Despite having to be apart, may we stay very close. And now, in the spirit of invocation, let's join in singing Sanctuary. The words are printed in your order of service. Sanctuary, all made holy, all 
Some of us come today with heavy hearts. We open our hearts to you. From Don and Liz, for their friend Lisa, who suddenly had to put down her precious 14-year-old tiger cat, Samson, last week. He was just a love. From Dan Muho, for my father, John, Daniel Muho, who took his own life on this day in 1967 when I was four months old. I love you, Dad. We all love you to this day and beyond. From Lara C. and Lara P. For our friends, Elise and Jaffrey, who are both dealing with mental and physical health challenges. Our final sorrow is an anonymous candle for our dear friend, Melanie, who lost her grandfather to the coronavirus this week. I so wish we could visit her and her family to help with the burden of grief they are feeling right now. I wish her peace during this terrible time. I wish peace to everyone who has been affected by this plague. Presente. And some of us come today in joy. We share your joy. A mixed candle of sorrow, but also tremendous joy from Dan Muho. We are all deeply distressed for those who have been lost, those who are struggling with their physical or economic lives, and those whose families have been profoundly impacted by the virus. Last night's One World Together at Home global broadcast was truly amazing to see that we are all so interconnected all around the world, doing the best we can to make the best we can for our fellow spiritual companions made me feel great peace during these trying times. We already know that here at ASC but suddenly the whole world has woken up to realize our innate drive for love, compassion, and one another. I am grateful for that awakening. From Keith Perrin and the Arlington Street Congregation, a candle of joy for our beloved sexton, Brad Nobles. Happy birthday, Brad, and may there be many, many more. We miss your hugs. From Queen Cheryl, as many of you know, the temporary COVID-19 job to which I have been assigned is taking its toll physically. Though it's no fun having swollen hands with fingers that don't move, it is such a gift to be able to say on Facebook, it hurts, and have an outpouring of support from this wonderful community. I am blessed beyond measure to be cared for by you, my beloved peeps. Thank you so, and I miss you. Love, Queen Cheryl. A candle of thanks to Ben and Ann from Richard Matoli. Thank you so much for bringing me groceries. Our final candle is one of great joy from the Arlington Street community 
celebrating the birth of beautiful Sophia, daughter of Reverend Katie and her husband Cole on Thursday, April 9th. the sorrows and all the joys we hold in our hearts, we light a silent candle to remember and to rejoice. May the peace of this sanctuary enter into our hearts as we share a quiet moment together, breathing our prayers for ourselves for one another, for our country, and for the world. you please join with me now in saying the affirmation and covenant of Arlington Street Church. The words are printed in your order of service and begin with the word love. Love is the spirit of this congregation and service is our gift. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to speak our truths in love and to help one another. El amor es el espíritu de nuestra congregación, y el servicio es nuestro regalo. Esto es a lo que nos comprometemos, convivir en paz, hablar nuestras verdades con amor, y ayudarnos los unos a los otros. Let's sing together again now. Mark David is going to lead us in There Are More Waters Rising. So this is a song that I learned at uh, Pinewoods Dance and Music Camp from Jeremy Carter Gordon, and it's by Sarah Lynch Thomason. Uh, I'm going to sing you a line, and I invite you to sing a line back to me. It goes like this. There are more waters rising, this I know, this I know, there are more Waters rising, this I know. Let's try that together. There are more waters rising, this I know. This I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. It continues. There are more waters rising, they will find their way to me. Let's try that. There are more waters rising they will find their way to me there are more waters rising this i know this i know there are more waters rising this i know and that last part there are more waters rising this i know this i know there are more waters rising this i know so we're going to try that whole form together Feel free to sing those notes, other notes, add some harmony parts, uh, add some of your own percussion. I'm going to be doing a little 
a little bongos and uh, uh, finger shots over here. So uh, feel free to clap your hands and, and uh, slap your thighs or how the spirit moves you. It goes like this. There are more. There are more waters rising, this I know, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. There are more waters rising, they will find their way to me. There are more waters rising, this I know, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. There are more fires burning. There are more fires burning, this I know, this I know. There are more fires burning, this I know. There are more fires burning, they will find their way to me. There are more fires burning, this I know, this I know. There are more fires burning, this I know. More mountains falling. There are more mountains falling, this I know, this I know. There are more mountains falling, this I know. There are more mountains falling, they will find their way to me. There are more mountains falling, this I know, this I know. There are more mountains falling, this I know. Now I will wade through the waters when they find their way to me. I will wade, I will wade through the waters, this I know, this I know. I will wade through the waters, this I know. I will wade through the waters when they find their way to me. I will wade through the waters, this I know, this I know. I will wade through the waters, this I know. I will walk, I will walk through the fires, this I know, this I know. I will walk through the fires, this I know. I will walk through the fires when they find their way to me. I will walk through the fires, this I know, this I know. I will walk through the fires, this I know. Rebuild the mountains, I will rebuild the mountains, this I know, this I know. I will rebuild the mountains, this I know. I will rebuild the mountains when they find their to me, I will rebuild the mountains, this I know, this I know, I will rebuild the mountains, this I know, I will wade, I will wade through the waters, this I know, this I know, I will wade through the waters, this I know, I will wade through the waters when they find their way to me, I will wade through the waters, this I know, this I know, I will wade through the waters, this I know, that last line, I will wade through the waters, this I know, I will wade through the waters, this I know, I will wade, I will wade through the waters, this I know, one more time, I will wade through the waters, this I know. It should be a celebration this week marking the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. But when mother isn't happy, no one's happy. We've made a huge mess. Within just a few months, though, as the ravaging pathogen rages and the humans have been forced to shelter and stop all the mess making, the Earth has begun to make a brilliant show of her resilience, not just in the coming of spring, but in the clearing of skies and water and wild animals extending their territory into so-called civilization. 
while more than a billion of us are staying at home in a carless LA, the sky is clear. For the first time in 30 years, the Himalayas are visible from 125 miles away. The canals of Venice are running clearer. And under cover of night in a seaside town in Wales, a herd of great Orme Kashmiri goats, descendants of the royal herd that was a gift from Queen Victoria, gallop through the desolate streets. Earth has so much to teach us about resilience. Resilience is the wherewithal to cope and even thrive in challenging times. It's about strength, emotional and spiritual strength. It's about toughness, getting up again after being knocked down or knocked out. And it's about strength of character. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. When we were young, almost all of us were resilient. A toddler learning to walk is a study in resiliency, so little forward motion and so much falling down. When we're a little older, the incoming tide washes away our sandcastle, the merry-go-round stops, the balloon breaks, the ice cream melts. And maybe we cry with disappointment, but we're not scarred by it. It's not the end of the world. And then somewhere along the way, we start to get squirrely about the unexpected. We resist shifting gears, trying a new way, changing course. We get rigid about change. I'm here with you today in the midst of a global pandemic to say that this would be a really good time for us to work on our resilience. Growing research shows higher levels of resilience are directly related to better outcomes when living through a crisis. Maureen Connolly, editor-in-chief of Everyday Health writes, Resilience is connected to our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. The payoff for putting in extra time and effort to become more resilient is less of the stuff we don't want. Feeling overwhelmed, fear, anxiety, and sadness. This morning, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of cultivating flexibility and prioritizing social connections. And then I'll frame building resilience as a spiritual practice and invite you to join me. First, to build resilience, we need to cultivate flexibility, the willingness to adapt to new circumstances by trying something different. If most of our routines have gone out the window, it's time to be, make some new ones, knowing that they might need to be remade tomorrow. Research shows that resilient people keep their challenging situations in perspective. It's important not to overthink and not to sweat the small stuff. There is nothing like adversity to train us for adversity. And here's some great news. Adversity can make us more resilient. Change will not kill us, but rigidity might. At Arlington Street, we've been holding hands for the benediction for more than 30 years. It is a cherished tradition. Some of you have shared with me that the only time you experience human touch is on Sunday mornings and how important that is to you. But in the first week of March, it dawned on me that we could not join hands during the closing words. Suddenly our lives and the lives of everyone whose paths we crossed were at stake. That Sunday we stood and faced the center of the sanctuary, faced each other, 
put our hands in namaste over our hearts, honoring the divine in each and every one. Everyone understood, and many of us loved it. Someone said, we should always do this. That's resilience. We've been gathering as a congregation since 1729. But in the second week of March, it dawned on me that we could not gather in the sanctuary at all. As COVID-19 rampaged, the only way to stay well was to be together while apart. Our heroic tech team took a mighty leap into the front and center. Mark David Buckles and the ministers rallied. And that Sunday and every Sunday since, you sat in front of your computer screens, some of you singing along to the hymns, all of you attentive during the sermon. And when it came time for the benediction, we put our hands in namaste over our hearts, honoring the divine in each and every one. That's resilience. And that was just the beginning. Reality continues to shift every day, sometimes hourly. Over and over, we are reminded that flexibility will be crucial to stopping the pandemic. Dean Becker, who trains people in resiliency, says more than education, more than experience, resilience will determine who succeeds and who fails. So first, flexibility, and second, to build resilience, we need to prioritize social connections. And there's nothing more important than making social connections while physically distancing. Being in the midst of caring people, and yes, the virtual midst counts, is the best place to begin. Research shows that connection to other people through shared experience, even if we do not know them well, strengthens psychological resilience while building social bonds. Every Sunday after church, members of the tech team send me the Zoom chat. I can't get past the greetings without my eyes filling with tears. I am so moved by the open-hearted way you say good morning and welcome each other to this beloved spiritual community, welcoming those who have never even been in our midst. Welcome home. We are so much stronger together, even when we're apart. So now let's talk about the spiritual practice of resiliency. It is not easy. As a medical student, Dr. Amit Sood was a firsthand witness to the chemical spill in Bhopal. He went on to create training for stress management and resiliency. Dr. Sood explains that building resiliency means working against our negativity bias, our natural attunement to negative situations. If I ask you, how many people have hurt you in life? He says, you can tell that quickly. They occupy a disproportionate real estate in your head. You have 50 square feet for people who have you and love you and 500 square feet for people who hurt you. To build resilience, we have to make a practice of focusing less on the negative experiences and more on the positive, less on the 500 square feet and more on the 50 square feet. That spiritual practice of shifting our attitude, shifting our gaze. Certain practices, says Dr. Sood, such as gratitude, compassion, sense of purpose and focus, these can help build resilience. Can we find gratitude for what went right within what went wrong? Can we have self-compassion for our struggles instead of self-judgment for our mistakes? Resilient people are optimistic. They are regularly saved by their sense of humor. 
they are motivated and courageous, they're intentional about where their focus is, and they keep worry at bay. When something bad happens to them, they view it as a challenge. Dr. Amit Sood concludes, can we choose to accept that with two thirds of the earth covered with clouds, it's going to rain on us sometimes? Rather than worry about horrific possibilities, can we focus on what is? Related to not catastrophizing is the importance of reminding ourselves that this too shall pass. American poet and civil rights activist Maya Angelou said, what I know is that it's going to get better. If it's bad, it might get worse, but I know that it's going to get better. And you have to know that. There's a country song out now, which uh, I wish I'd written. She says, it says, every storm runs out of rain. No matter how dull and seemingly unpromising life is right now. It's going to change. It's going to be better. In these difficult days, I've returned to the lessons in resilience from the AIDS pandemic. I was serving our congregation in Provincetown in the mid 1980s. We had no idea what had hit us. Apparently healthy young gay men were suddenly very, very sick. No one knew how it was being spread. We assumed we would all get it. That virus, HIV, was 100% fatal. The deaths were all gruesome, and our grief was terrible. For what felt like years, none of us slept much, but at some point, I realized we had to change our strategy from wartime triage to long-term care. We stopped making hair-rising 100-mile drives to Boston hospitals, realizing with a terrible start that there was nothing good there anyone could do that we couldn't do better. We rented apartments on Commercial Street, close to the church, and moved the sickest people there where we could better care for them. Those who were sick but still well enough to be in church lay on pallets in front of the pulpit. We were stretching for flexibility, constantly adapting and almost always on the verge of tears. One Sunday, Preston Babbitt stood up after the service and said, this is really grim. But our loved ones who have died wouldn't want us to be this sad. And those of us who are HIV positive don't want to spend our last days so sad. Today we're alive. Let's remember joy. And so we did our best. We gathered at the church to eat together and stitch AIDS quilts. We crowded around the beds of people who were dying and told stories and sang songs. We threw parties at any excuse. It wasn't perfect, but everyone felt loved and part of something bigger than fear. And we learned that love wins. Paul Richard said to me, even if it kills every single one of us, even if there is no one left to tell the stories. It matters that we care for each other in all this madness. It matters that even in the face of death, we love each other well. Beloved spiritual companions, in these difficult days, let us practice resilience. Cultivate strength and flexibility. Practice gratitude, compassion, optimism, humor, and courage. Every storm runs out of rain. Let's remember joy. May we love each other well. Amen.
Days are getting longer, we're not getting any stronger, trust me, Mama knows. But lie in my arms while you sleep. Enough for some 
friends, I want to begin by thanking you for the outpouring of generosity to Arlington Street. The kindness and encouragement in this beloved spiritual community has been nothing short of astounding. Many of you have taken it upon yourselves to call those who are sheltering alone. And now we have five teams of people delivering groceries and other essentials to those who can't get out, ensuring that no one is left, is no one is left out of our circle of care and connection. As these weeks of physical isolation stretch out, let's be in close touch with each other. We have never been physically so far apart and emotionally and spiritually so close together. Love is truly the spirit of this congregation. Each of us has the power to make a difference in these difficult days, to do our part to strengthen the safety net that holds and upholds us all. Your generous enthusiasm and support for everything Arlington Street is doing right now to uplift and uphold us, keeping us strong and connected is deeply appreciated. Thank you for never ceasing to amaze us. Please take a moment now to fill our virtual collection plate. You can text the word give, G-I-V-E, to 617-300-0509, scan the QR code in the order of service, or click on the yellow donate button on the bottom right of the homepage at ASCBoston.org. Again, here's that number, 617-300-0509. Thank you for your generosity. After you make your gift to sustain our beloved community, please continue to share in the chat what inspires you during these difficult days. Thank you. There's a place for us, somewhere a place for us, peace and quiet and open air, wait for us somewhere. There's a time for us, someday a time for us, time together with time to spare, time to look, time to care, someday, somewhere. time, my friends, to make our bids. Our virtual indulge auction is closing in just over a week. We are spending a lot of time right now staring at our own walls. 
Why not enhance that view with some original art? The auction includes beautiful works by Sister Carita Kent, Ed Ponce, and Lorinda O'Connor. Or perhaps your walls are calling for a custom portrait of your, be your beloved animal companions. It's all up for auction. And if you're fantasizing about getting away, there are fabulous getaways available to Maine, Vermont, and Provincetown. Thanks to our generous donors, all of this and more can be yours. Please bid generously. The link to the Indulge auction is on the homepage at ASCBoston.org. Enjoy. This coming week, there are many wonderful events happening in the Arlington Street Zoom Room. I'm gonna give you a few highlights, but be sure to check out the homepage at ASCBoston.org for the full schedule. On Monday at noon, join Reverend Kim for Monday Metta, a half hour of loving kindness meditation. On Monday at four, Reverend Kim is hosting a, a celebration of National Poetry Month with poems to go on. Bring a few favorite poems to share or come just to listen. On Wednesday at four, Reverend Kim and I will be hosting our weekly tea party. We can't wait to hear your thoughts on our next conversation prompt provided by our own wonderful art judge. Be thinking about a person from history with whom you'd like to spend an afternoon. On Thursday at seven, Mark David and Reverend Kim are launching a fun new offering called Song Share. Don't miss this opportunity to sing along with our director of music, section leaders, and members of the Arlington Street Choir. After the service today, feel free to stay in this Zoom room to continue visiting during virtual coffee hour. Before I turn it over to Mark David for our closing hymn, a final thank you to all of you who joined in today's virtual worship, and again, to all of those who made it possible. Let's be together like this throughout the week, and again, next Sunday morning at 11. It's been a joy to be with you this morning, my friends. Don't forget, we're in this together. I love you.
going to pause this for a moment because I've been singing this song for a long time. And one of the times I sang it a long time ago, I was with my friend and colleague, Reverend Allison Palm. And she said this song makes her sad because she's singing about love somewhere, but there's so much love right here in the room with her. And as I look around and see all of your faces, I think there is so much love right here. And I'm going to invite us to sing her recast version of the lyrics, which is, there is more love right here, and I'm going to keep on because I've found it. There is more love right benediction. I invite you to put your hands over your heart in namaste. I bow to the divine in you. The words of W.E.B. Du Bois, born in 1868, co-founder of the NAACP and the first African-American to earn a doctorate at Harvard. It is the wind and the rain, O oh God, the cold and the storm that make this earth to blossom and bear its fruit. So in our lives, it is storm and stress and hurt and suffering that make us bring the world's work to its highest perfection. Let us learn then in these growing days to respect the harder, sterner aspects of life together with its joy and laughter and to weave them all into the great web. Let us keep this faith, beloveds, and pass it on. The service begins when the service ends. Bless your hearts. I love you. Amen. Where you go? Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will
Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. For your people are my people. Your people are my. Your people are my people. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace.